So there was fury from the majority of Scottish MPs that during a seven and a half hour debate on the EU withdrawal bill at Westminster yesterday, only 15 minutes was devoted to issues to do with devolution. Before the news, we spoke to the SNP group leader, Ian Blackford. The Secretary of State for Scotland should be there to defend Scotland's interests. And he has sat back, he sat aside on the bench yesterday and did nothing. He has done nothing to defend the interests of the Scottish Parliament and the Scottish people. He should be utterly ashamed of himself. And I did make the call last week for him to resign. He ought to resign. The fact that we have seen powers being taken back from the Scottish Parliament and our elected representatives have not been able to debate this is an utter, utter disgrace. Well, let's speak to the Scottish Secretary, David Mundell. Good morning to you. Good morning, Gary. Fifteen minutes to debate this. Why did David Liddington take up that entire time to talk for himself? Well, I think as you set out in your interview with uh, Ian Blackford, David did allow uh, many interventions during uh, his uh, contribution. But I don't disagree that it was unfortunate that we were uh, reduced to, to that length of time for the debate. But it came down to a choice by the Labour Party to pursue numerous votes, repetitive votes, uh, technical votes, not votes of principle, and votes when it was clear the government had a majority. So it would have have been possible to have had much, much more time uh, to debate the issues in question. Had and David I Liddington much, sat down, why did he stay on his feet for that length of time? As you, as we've just uh, said, David Liddington took numerous interventions during his period. What would have been much, much better would have been to have had longer to have had the debate so people across the House of Commons could have got involved. And the way of achieving that was for Labour not to pursue every single issue well, to a vote. Well, the, the parliamentary timetable is set by the government. The parliamentary timetable is set by the House and there was a vote on a programme Led motion. Led by Andrea Leadsom uh, th for the was, government. There was a programme motion at the start. People knew exactly how much time there was available. The Labour Party knew exactly how much time there would be left to debate these issues if they took every single uh, vote, uh, which is what uh, they did. And I think that's very regrettable because I think it is uh, important Important, that there was an opportunity for people to have had their say. But the reality well, is, Well, part Gary, of the, the reason reality, people didn't Gary, have their say is because the, the, David Liddington was on his feet for the full time. I ask well, you again, well, why did just, he stand there? Why, we've, didn't, we've, why didn't he allow other people to, to make speeches? We've just uh, said that David Liddington took numerous interventions. Not the we same also, as allowing people to actually make their substantive point, is it? Well, it, it, as I think was part of the, the various points of order raised at the end of proceedings, uh, it would have it, it, it allowed more people actually uh, to get on the record with uh, their position. But the point I would like to make is that even if we'd had a hundred hours of debate, the outcome wouldn't have changed because the SNP and Scottish government position is exactly the same as it was on day one of this bill. But and wouldn't wouldn't it have been more democratic to perhaps have had those hundred hours of debate to at least let everyone have their say, so those who are representing the people of Scotland each get a chance to speak. We've already had 96 hours of debate in the House of Commons, over 150 hours of debate uh, in uh, the House of Lords. This matter has been debated repeatedly in Parliament, in the Scottish Parliament, on uh, your radio programme. The issues have all been uh, well aired. But I do agree that it was most unfortunate that we reached a position that there was such a limited time uh, for debate last night. But that was due to decisions that the Labour Party took uh, in pursuing these numerous technical and repetitive votes. Isn't the reality, as we have discussed before, Mr Mandel, that you promised amendments during the Commons report stage that didn't happen? You said that amendments laid down in the Lords would then be debated fully when they returned to the Commons. That hasn't happened either. How would you characterise your handling of this? What I said, which is uh, what uh, the important part that, that's missed out from that, I said that I wanted to see agreed amendments. And that's what I sought to deliver in the House of Commons, agreed amendments, amendments agreed by the UK government and by the Scottish government. It's now quite clear that it was never going to be possible to get agreed amendments because, quite simply, the Scottish government, the SNP, Nicola Sturgeon, have a different view of the constitution from everyone else. So we the, just stopped discussing it then? Uh, we've, we've discussed it 
uh, continually. I want to continue uh, to discuss it because I think what people in Scotland want is the two governments to work together. They don't want uh, constitutional posturing. They want the two governments to work together, particularly on this issue of Brexit, which will have such significant consequences, to get the best possible deal for Scotland and to focus on issues which really matter to people like jobs and the economy. Given your personal handling of all of this, as I say, these amendments didn't come forward at the report stage. You promised uh, a debate and the return to the Commons. That 15 minutes was taken up by David Liddington. Ian Blackford says you should resign. Have you considered your position? I consider that what I have done is that I have stood up for the constitutional settlement uh, which uh, people... Well, with respect, vote, you sat we, down yesterday. Uh, <laughs> David Livingston did the talking I, I was, and didn't allow anybody else. I was uh, on, on the bench. But I've stood up for the constitutional settlement that people uh, voted for in 2014. Now, it's quite clear that Ian Blackford, Nicholas Sturge and SNP don't like that uh, constitutional settlement, don't support it. And once again, we've got Mike Russell out today saying that the constitution... Uh, should be changed. We had the SNP conference at the weekend uh, promoting getting rid of the devolution settlement in favour of uh, uh, in favour of independence. So I'm not going to apologise for standing up for the settlement that people voted for, and that's uh, what I do. I make sure that Scotland has a strong voice within the United Kingdom. But given that you haven't been able to reach any agreement with the Scottish Government, despite two years of talking, and you've been at all of these negotiations, I just go back to that question that Ian Blackford raised. Have you considered your position. I, 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 Ian Blackford may see his role in discussions with Nicola Sturgeon as to roll over and agree with her. I don't see it as my role. I see it as my role to stand up for the constitutional settlement that people voted for, and that is that the Scottish Parliament does not have a veto over what happens in the rest of the UK. And in the, throughout this process, basically what the, the Scottish Government, Nicola Sturgeon, have been seeking to do is to change the existing constitutional settlement. You and and I am in, not in agreement with doing that. When but you talk I do about what happened in 2014... With the Scot I want to continually work with the Scottish Government. And I'm very, very concerned to hear the sort of suggestions that Ian Blackford was making about uh, not working together. Throughout the, the process, we've always been able to work together, even if we don't agree. And I'm absolutely uh, committed to doing that because there are all sorts of important things that are going on, such as a transfer of powers on welfare so that the Scottish Parliament, Scottish Government can take on uh, welfare powers. There's lots of detailed work to be done there. What would be the possible benefit of the Scottish Government saying, no, we're not going to cooperate with the UK government well, perhaps on they something believe, that it says that it, it wants to do? Well, perhaps they believe that you have reneged on the promises that you've made in the past when you talked about the Scottish Parliament, you and those, and you talk about that settlement in 2014, saying that this would be the most powerful devolved Parliament in the world. When you look at what happened yesterday, that might ring a little hollow to, to many. It, it's not uh, hollow at all. It's entirely uh, consistent with uh, the Seoul uh, Convention. We're acting in uh, accordance uh, with that. But people who want Scotland... By ignoring it. People who want Scotland to, to be uh, independent are always going to take a, a, a different view in relation uh, to the Scottish Parliament. The Scottish Parliament has a huge array of powers, and I think what people want to see happening is that Parliament focus on the use of those powers for the benefit of the people of Scotland, not these constitutional arguments. We've had an, a report out again today to say that Scotland's economy is faltering. Isn't that really what the focus of all those powers the Scottish Parliament should uh, be on, getting our economy into the best possible shape and creating jobs for people in Scotland? Theresa May found herself in a very difficult position yesterday. It seems that she reached some compromise with uh, the, those who wanted to uh, rebel. Will there be a meaningful vote at the end of this process? Yes, there will be a meaningful vote. The government is committed uh, to having uh, a meaningful vote. And so MPs and could we'll, reject the deal. And we'll bring forward uh, proposals uh, tomorrow, which will go back uh, to the House of Lords, just the exact nature uh, of the meaningful vote. But the meaningful vote won't allow for the reopening of uh, the 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 referendum uh, result or having another referendum or tie the government's hands in negotiations. But it will give Parliament the opportunity uh, to have its say. When Ian Blackford spoke yesterday, one of your Conservative colleagues, it seems to be Ian Little Granger, uh, when Mr Blackford asked what could members do, he shouted suicide. 
Is that appropriate? I didn't hear those remarks, but of course it's not appropriate. Uh, so what would you say to him? What? Ian Blackford and others. Uh, well, Ian Blackford and no, others. To Ian Little Granger. Uh, uh, what Ian would you Blackford say to him? Ian and others raised uh, the issue uh, with the speaker, and the speaker made it quite clear that that was something that was inappropriate to say in a debate like that. Will you be speaking to him? Does it show contempt for Scottish members? It, it shows uh, inappropriate behaviour in the House of Commons. Unfortunately, members across the House uh, occasionally indulge in such behaviour. And when it happens, as, as was the case yesterday, it should be slapped down. Should he, should he be reprimanded? He's already uh, been drawn to the attention of uh, the Speaker, and that's the appropriate thing within the House of Commons. David Mundell, the Secretary of State for Scotland. Thank you very much for joining us on the programme this morning. It is 19 minutes past eight.